Pete Martin. Thanks for watching. If you're interested in other videos of mandolin, fiddle, improvisation, and many other musical subjects, click the subscribe banner below. And if you want to be notified when I post new videos, click the bell icon right next to it. Barry Harris is a jazz pianist and a teacher who has come up with a wonderful way of teaching the bebop language. Bebop, of course, is the music from the mid-1940s developed by Charlie Parker, Dizzy Gillespie, and others, but especially Charlie Parker. And the way Harris teach, teaches this is just terrific. Um, and everybody ends up sounding different than each other, uh, all of his students. So I very much highly recommend this way of learning. Uh, for people that are serious about studying Barry Harris's stuff, I would definitely recommend his two jazz workshop books, the Barry Harris, the Barry Harris Workshop Video, Volume 1 and 2. You can get these at jazzworkshops.com. They're expensive, but they're very much worth it for anybody who really seriously wants to study this stuff. This series of videos on Barry Harris will show you how to put some of these ideas that he teaches onto the mandolin. There's a PDF that goes along with each of these videos. So for this video, uh, email me and request Barry Harris uh, number one, the dominant scale. In this video, I'm going to show all, the, all of Barry's concepts in C and in first position. Now, eventually, a serious student should learn these in all positions, and they should learn them in all keys. One of the things Barry stresses in his teaching is to be able to hear the chord changes when anybody solos. One of the things you'll notice if you transcribe any good solo of pretty much any music style, but especially in bebop and especially the solos of Charlie Parker, you can hear the chord changes very clearly in his playing. Barry calls this whole idea playing rhythmically playing rhythmically. And what it really means is you're putting a note of the chord that, let me take a step backwards, if you're playing all eighth notes, that you're putting the notes of the current chord on the beat in those eighth notes. So in other words, beat one, two, and three, and four, if you're in four, four time, beats one, two, three, four are most of the time a note of the chord that's happening behind you. And once again, Barry calls this playing rhythmically. What we're gonna look at in this video is what Barry calls the C dominant scale. And that's the notes of a C scale with a B flat. And so it's the notes C, D, E, F, G, A, and B flat. And we play those in such a way that puts the notes of the C7 chord, which is C, E, G, and B flat, on the beat. Example one on the PDF file shows the C dominant scale played up from the root to the seven and then back down. So in other words, the root is C, the seven is the flat seven in this case because the C seventh note, the seven is a flatted seven, so that's B flat. So we play C up to B flat and then back down. You'll see that in example one here. Do you notice in example one how the notes on the beat are C, E, G, and B flat? They're the notes of the C7 chord. So play example one again, and then play a C7 chord right after it, and notice how that scale sounds like the C7 chord.
For every scale, Barry likes to get people to practice that scale in a number of ways. And so that means that you'll have all these different ways of using that scale when you improvise, not just the scale straight up and down, which is a boring sound very quickly. Um, so doing these does two things. It really gets the feel and the look of the scale in your mind and in your hands. And by that, I mean the ability to look at the fingerboard on the mandolin and see where the notes are of this scale. And it gives you all kinds of improvising tools that you can use. So definitely practice all of these little variations of the scale. In example one, we saw the scale, the seven notes of the scale, straight up and down, starting from C, going up to B flat, and then going back down. Now, Barry also likes to have people practice this in what are thirds. So in thirds, you start on the first note, or C, you skip the second note and play the third note. So you'd play C, E. Then you go up one note in the scale to D, and you play that note, and you skip a note, and then you go to the next note, which is F. So you continue in this kind of stair-stepping method, and I show that in example two. Even though I just showed it in one octave here, you really do need to learn these in each position on the mandolin from the lowest note you can go to the highest note you can go because you don't want to limit your options when you're improvising. So here I'm going to play the ascending thirds from the lowest note I can go on the mandolin in this key, which is G, to the highest note I can go, which is B flat on the E string. This is uh, example three, and I play it here. Like I said, it's really important to learn all of these examples from as low as you can go in first position, the note G, to as high as you can go, the note B flat. And then when you do it in all the other keys, you should eventually learn it from the lowest note you can play in that key to the highest note you can play in that key in first position. Then do it, of course, in second position, third position, fourth position, fifth position, etc., depending on how high you like to go on the fingerboard. Barry also likes to have people practice thirds, but with a chromatic lead-in note. So in other words, my first third was C to E, but he has a chromatic lead-in note. So in other words, a chromatic half-step below C is B. So we step up in thirds with the chromatic note leading into the first note and then the third. Uh, this is exercise four, and I play it here. In addition to ascending thirds, we can also descend in thirds, and that is example five, and I play it here. Just like we did earlier, the descending thirds can have a chromatic lead note in it, and that is example six, which I play here. The next thing Barry likes to get people to practice on the scales are what he calls triads. And what triads are is you play a note, skip a note, play a note, skip a note, play a note. So basically there are three notes that are every other note in the scale. So in other words, the first one would be C, skip D, 
play E, skip F, play G, and then you move up to the next scale note and do exactly the same thing. This is example 7, and I play it here. We can also play that ascending thirds exercise with the chromatic lead-in. And I do that here in example 8. Triads can also be played descending and I do that here in example 9. And once again we can do the same descending triads with the chromatic lead-in note, and I do that in example 10. There's one more thing that Barry likes to get people to practice on, and that is what he calls chords. So we're doing the same thing we did in triads, but we're just going to add a fourth note. So we'll play a note, skip a note, play a note, skip a note, play a note, skip a note, and play a note. So in other words, if we're in uh, the C7 scale, play C, skip D, play E, skip F, play G, skip A, and play B flat, and then we move up one note in the scale and keep doing the same thing. This is example 11, and I play it here. And just like before, that ascending chords exercise can be played with a chromatic lead in. This is example 12, and I play it here. We can play the chords descending, and I do that in example 13. Example 14 here has the same descending chords with the chromatic lead-in. I play that here. Now the last thing we're going to do on the dominant scale is we're going to ascend one chord, go up to the next chord and descend, go down, then go up to the next note in the scale and ascend the chord, and etc. So we're going to rotate ascending and descending. We're going to do that in both directions, going up and going down. This is example 15 and I play it here. When you can do this dominant scale and all the exercises discussed in this video, then move them to other keys. And eventually when you get comfortable on those, then go on to video number two.
I'm Pete Martin. Thanks for watching. Thank you.